So I've been using Pocket Base for a long time, and one of the things which I love about it is that I can host it anywhere. But when it comes to hosting, it's not always the easiest thing. A lot of knowledge need is needed in order to get set up with just the basics. And that's why I thought I'd make this video just to simplify it and sort of break it down so that you can see all of the different options that you have for hosting. Uh, I personally am favorable to two different hosts, and that is Pocket Host, which is a way to host vanilla Pocket Base instances. And I also love uh, Fly.io. Now, I'll go into the pros and cons of each of those. Uh, but first, I just want to let everyone know that these are just my two preferred platforms. I've hosted in Azure. I've hosted in uh, Google Cloud. I haven't hosted in AWS, but I imagine it'd be very simple. Uh, it's just, uh, for me, I don't like having to manage uh, Docker and the Docker deployments and things like that. So I prefer easier, especially in development, because when you're just trying to create an app, you don't want to be mucking around with a lot of that sort of stuff. At least I don't. So I prefer uh, hosting it on Fly or pocket host let's start with the easier one um, and go with pocket host uh, pocket host is super simple to get started with if you go to your browser and you type out pockethost.io you can basically get started pretty much instantly by clicking get started and uh, you select an instance name uh, your email and password and then you're good to go and so this is what it looks like once you've signed in and done all that. Basically, you've got your details for your instance, all of the fun stuff that you can do here. Um, you can get FTP access, so you can set up your own FTP clients to be able to get access to it. Um, and you've also got ways for getting started, um, resources to the pocket base. You've got logging, so you can see exactly what's happening on your instance. Um, you're able to set up secrets. I haven't done any of this just because um, I haven't needed to. You're able to change um, some of these settings here um, as well as synchronize the admin password. So it's really the simplest way to get set up with an account. Like you, you basically have a pocket-based instance out of the box just by doing this. So really, really simple. If we go to here and then I log into my instance, I basically got access to a fully fledged pocket base instance. Pretty powerful stuff. I'm using this for hosting my newsletters. Um, I recommend that you go with this if you've got a simple application like this. Um, this even a complex one, you you can do a lot. I found that the failings of this way of negotiating pocket base. Uh, mainly come down to whenever you're trying to do anything more complex than just doing a, a CRUD app. Like I needed to use Stripe and I wanted to integrate it from the ground up without webhooks. And so that's what I did for uh, the pocket-based Stripe library that I manage, um, which is a downstream from Fast Pocket. Uh, so I recommend you go and if you've got a complex use case like I did, you forget about using pocket host and you run with a fly.io. Now, fly.io is pretty complicated if you don't know much about DevOps, but I'm gonna try and break it down in a really manageable way. So fly.io is basically a wrapper around a, um, a, a cloud hosting uh, platform. So you can, it's all managed via the command line. So uh, you, to get started, just use fly auth and then sign up once you've downloaded the tool. Um, uh, depending on the platform, you can read through this these docs and do that. And then once you've signed up, you can then log in and auth to give yourself access to the platform. And what you can do from there is you can run your own uh, Docker instances uh, and manage your own Docker instances and just directly from, from this app. You don't even need much Docker knowledge, to be honest with you. You just really need to know what your application, which you're doing, um, is doing. So basically, these are the most important files that are going to be in your project. I'm using um, 
a copy of the pocket-based Stripe library that I've created just to demonstrate the functionality too. But if you've got this Docker file here, this will basically have all of the um, environment uh, variables and arguments that uh, can be injected through um, through your your fly uh, environments variables, which are set up here. Uh, you're able to set your app name, your region, um, and I think it supports like a bunch of different regions, like 14, 14 odd regions. Um, and you're also able to set up how um, the drive mounts and how the drive will basically connect um, when you're trying to, to have storage for something like a um, for something like pocket base where you've got pb underscore data and you want that data to persist between um restarting and um stopping and starting the the docker instance you need to attach a disk to basically store all of that data um and that's what we see here in, uh, under this mounts um and then we've also got uh the server set up as well as the virtual machine configuration which is what your Docker will be hosted on, the Docker instance will be hosted on. So all of this is like very, very basic and simple, um, but very, very powerful. So I think the best way is to show you how to do a deployment. So uh, basically we've got our app name test deployment here, which I've just added in. Um, we've got a bunch of these variables. We can leave all of these pretty much um, as they are for now. Um, these secrets, um, will need to be set up in, in fly, um, which is probably for another video, but if you're planning on using, uh, pocket-based Stripe, you need to set these up as separate secrets. Um, and then you've also got these, uh, mounts here. So I like to follow this pattern of going data underscore test deployment for the name of the volume um, and that's this is something we're going to um, create after we do our first launch um, and then we've got this destination which basically in our um, docker deployment which we're also going to do once we run fly launch um, it basically mirrors the structure of going bin pb data where pb data will be our um our instance of pocket base um now let's just do something real quick and go into our bin and make sure that we can run um our our um pocket base instance so i built this from the ground up by uh, basically compiling with main.go um but you can you can just use a, a standard pocket base instance or you can choose to use uh pocket base stripe it's up to you um and we'll just go to app dash md sixty four dash Linux, and we'll run serve. Oh, sorry, not Linux. It has to be Darwin, and then serve. And we can see that our instance is running under the admin UI. So we're basically wanting to link up this this instance directly and host this. So we'll clear out all of that. And we'll go just run through and make sure all of this is right. Cool. Now we can go fly launch dash dash no dash deploy. And what this is going to do is set up the uh, infrastructure in uh, fly.io for us to be able to run. So set up the VM. Um, set up the app registration just so that uh, pocket base knows that um, whatever we where the settings we've got under this fly.toml file which is just a configuration file that um, those are legit so if we run this let's say could not find uh, a docker file nor detect a one ah, okay we're in the wrong thing so let's get out of this and we'll run launch no deploy and then it says would you like to copy the configuration of our fly.toml to the new app we'll go yes and then it will ask us to tweak these settings all of these are what i need so i'm just going to go no we don't want to tweak any settings 
and then our configuration is ready. Now we want to create the disk. Um, so disks are uh, created and attached to um, to apps, and they're done by creating a disk first, and then the app will go and pick it, pick out that disk from this source here, um, and attach it to the app. So if we go fly volumes create and then we'll run data underscore test deployment we'll get asked warning blah 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 this is basically about redundancy do we want to create two disks um we'll just get say um we still want to use the volumes feature we'll set our disk to be the same as our primary region which is sydney and boom, we've created this test deployment here. So now what we can do is we can run um, fly deploy. And we can see our image will be built and attached directly to our, our pocket base, uh, th this pocket base disk that we've created for our pocket base data. And this will just take a little bit of time. So I might just skip through a bunch of it. Now we're getting closer to it. So it's just pushed up the whole image that's been created from this Docker file. So it goes through and creates that. And then it also runs up the machine. And then finally, it gives us a, uh, a an app link that we can open and see our app running. So if we go to here, noting that this is our, indeed our, um, our admin link. Ah, so this is my bad. This is a problem directly with my deployment and won't actually apply to you. So if I take this app name, then I run this, put this on the host here. And then it's saying we need our Stripe key and port. I don't actually think we need the Stripe key. Two hours later. So my mistake, guys, I think we actually do need this secret key. And we're just going to put in blah, 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 because we don't actually care about it. And then we'll have to run a redeploy. And boom, we've got our pocket base instance with a little hiccup along the way. But you can see how powerful this is. It's very simple. You don't need to learn a new technology like Docker. You just really need to have a Docker image that will deploy properly. Um, unfortunately, I forgot the steps to deploy my own one. Uh, but yeah, you guys can figure it out. Um, and hopefully this serves as a good guide for you if you're going to set up Stripe with pocket base. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.